Hi, this video is about Symmetrix software. Symmetrix is a powerful tool for designing cavity filters as well as diplexers and multiplexers. The purpose of today's video is to design a coaxial cavity filter. However, we will use that as a basis for explaining how to use the tool. The following chart shows a few of the options available in Symmetrix. We will go through them one by one. When you open Symmetrix, phase one, filter synthesis, users have the option of designing a filter or a diplexer, a band pass filter, band stop filter, low pass filter, or multi band. They can also choose the topology. These are the different kinds of topology available in Symmetrix. This is the whole interface of Symmetrix. Start first by saving your project. And we choose to design a single filter and its band pass going from one that's the center frequency and the band is 50 meg you can also switch to start and stop if you want we will choose a filter of order five and this is the return loss we want across that band delta f and delta bandwidth this is for a multi-band and this is the unloaded queue usually it's less than infinity infinite means you have no losses whatsoever so when there are losses it goes below that and when it's loaded which means you connect an input and output to it then becomes even lower and lower for now we'll select it to be infinity you can also add a transmission zeros so i click here for example i'm gonna add and here it is this is how you add zeros which means you want a sharp drop and you want to have almost negligible insertion at specific frequency because there is something else running in this band for our case we'll go without transmission zeros you can see the results here this is the s parameter do calculate all this is the group delay and this is the power analysis the dispersion is shown here it's possible for user to specify dispersion correction to be applied this is this is for applying a dispersion correction we will talk about dispersion at the end of the video to the right we have what we call the normalized coupling factors these are calculated by same metrics based on the specifications you entered here now instead of the normalized coupling you can also look at the bandwidth coupling bandwidth this is the equivalent of the normalized my coupling there is a relation between them it's this is equal to the coupling divided by the bandwidth which is in our case 50 meg specifications this is for to enter more stuff related to thermal we're gonna have a special video for that in the in the near future for the normalized one you can also edit the metrics you can modify these numbers you can also edit the sign if you want to change the sign Changing any one of these numbers, of course, will change the shape of your filter. So be careful when you do these changes. To an S2P file, touchstone file, or you can export the matrix itself. You can also load data. So if you have a response and you would like to know the coupling coefficient of that response, you can load the data. And Symmetrix will automatically read the s2p file the touchstone file and derive the equivalent coupling parameters for that file now that we are happy with our filter response we are happy with all these entries we move to the next phase which is filter design 3d modeling the following options are available with symmetrics you can have a coaxial cavity a waveguide cavity or cylindrical cavity you can have substrate integrated waveguide cavity filter or planar coupled resonator in our case we'll choose coaxial cavity confirm and start a new design say yes again the first thing you do is you save this a new design now we'd like to save say okay now based on the specifications of the filter symmetrics go ahead and calculate the different dimensions for the cavity so we're talking about the cavity width the cavity height resonator radius resonator height and this is a range for analysis same thing for the height this is a range for you to calculate 
to sweep along to see the effect on the resonant frequency and the Q. You have the tuning screw, so that's the radius of the tuning screw, and that's the depth of the tuning screw. In our case, we want our resonator to be at 1. Estimated resonator height based on empirical formulas is 5.25, but we would like to calculate that, we would like to verify that. You can specify the plating to be silver, where the conductivity is 6.1. Silver is used because it has so many good features for filters. One of the most important one is the conductivity. It has the highest possible conductivity that allows us to have the highest Q. Accept these dimensions, click, calculate all, and now it's going to do the sweeping, the sweeping. So for fixed post diameter, okay, so this is fixed at 0.9. We are varying the height from 4.288 to 5.513. That's for the resonator height. As you can see, Symmetrix selected this point where the frequency is 1.196 and the Q is 8.260. What's important for us? First, that the Q should be very high. And the second thing, that the frequency, the resonant frequency, is higher than the upper band of the filter. That's very important. Now, if you go to fixed post height and you change the radius of the resonator, you notice that the Q would like is higher within this area so same metric selected this point we can change this one to 1.74 make sure to change this also to 5.25 that's somehow extreme just to see what is the minimum resonant frequency we can reach so I do calculate all come here and the minimum is 0.956 which is lower than the lower band of our filter so this is a good cavity. We can use this one. It covers the whole bed. So now the next step is immediately after here, step number two is single cavity. So what we're trying to do here is to design our cavity by playing with the tuning screw depth. So we discover that the tuning depth can change the resonant frequency from 0.95 to 1.16. We want to resonate, we want this cavity to resonate at 1 gigahertz, which is the center frequency of the filter. Apply a next step. Very good. So now we want to play with the height. We want to change the height. Apply next. And here we do the tuning. Because we are looking for that point, construct the model. Select here. Now, Symmetric is going to create the model in the electronic desktop in HFSS. This is the model created by Symmetric automatically for you, and it will do the calculation. And the resonant frequency is right at 1 gigahertz. So, we finished designing our cavity. The next step is to go to the coupling scheme. So, what we want to do is we want to be able to reproduce these numbers that we saw before these ones so same metric comes with so many options we select the traditional one so this is the iris width this is the iris thickness and this is the coupling screw radius and coupling screw depth now you have a step width if you want to have a step width you have the step height and also the shift. Apply and next, construct the model, same way we did with the cavity. So we go to HFSS, you have the coupling, two cavities, and notice here we are using the eigen solver to calculate the coupling between the two. You can also use a driven solution to calculate the coupling. Run simulation. We have a solution. It's around 0.265. The numbers we're looking for are 0.9 and 0.68. In fact, you can see the band here in this green area. 
So what do we do? We do another parametric study. Notice that I'm doing everything within symmetrics. I don't need to be in HFSS. Everything is done within symmetrics. So now we have the iris width. We have also the coupling screw depth, and we have also the step height. So 0.285 seems to be the right number. It doesn't have to be that accurate. We just need to be very close to the value. So 0.285, that's the number we're gonna use for to reproduce 0.6825 coupling. Now let's look for 0.9738. So we see here that 0.9 seems to be also the right number for the second coupling for the step height. Good enough. Now we go to the last step, which is designing our input and output section. These are the numbers proposed by Symmetrix. And the most important number is the port height. That's the one we can play with in order to produce the coupling we are looking for, which is 1.1208. So apply next. Let's see the nominal one. Let's construct the model. Again, Symmetrix will construct the model in electronic desktop. That's the one. Can we go back here? We're on the simulation. And notice here that what we are looking for is the group delay. So that value of the coupling get translated to the group delay. And the number we're looking for is 10.136. And the number we have is around point, is a 9.617 group uh, for the group delay. Of course, that's in nanosecond. We can improve that by doing a parametric study. So we can see that our number falls between 2.475 and 2.55. So if we make it 2.5, now that we have all the dimensions, we can go now to the last step, which is full 3D modeling. And here we have all the information we want. This is the topology we adopted. So if you click on any one of them, it's going to give you all the dimensions. Remember here we said we're going to make this 2.5. Port length, we're not going to change this. Same thing here. Now we have to check each cavity. Now we check for the coupling between two cavities. Now we don't have any cross coupled. So we move to modeling and we ask Symmetrix to construct the model for us in HFSS. So now the model will be constructed. This is our filter. This is our initial design. And we run simulation. Now that we have a solution, we go to HFSS and we plot the results. So as you can see, the, res the response is different than what we are expecting. That's okay. Now we can export the results. Make sure to select do not override solution renormalization. So we go back to symmetrics and we activate optimization. And we load the data from HFSS and you do extract matrix. Notice the difference between what we want and what we got from HFSS. And this is the difference between the two. You notice the two matrices are not the same. If you click on error level, it will give you the delta of the each coupling. So this is the error level. Now we can see that M11 and M55 are completely wrong. The delta is huge. So now we need to tune cavity 1 and 5. So that's what we're going to do. So we go back to the design. And because this is positive, because it's positive, it means we need to push this more. So we need to push this to six, maybe six, five. Let's try that. Modeling, update the model. Then you run the simulation. Then you upload the S parameters again. And you look at the difference. We're gonna we're gonna see now the the results of modifying the design. 
simulation is done so now we go to hfss we export the data same way we did with the original one let's give it a name one score one back to some metrics and now we're going to upload the new one as you can see extract metrics and because we click this track mode on now we can see the difference between what we had before and what we have now and you can see we have improvement we have improvement so we're moving in the right direction so we're going to repeat the same process again and again until we are able to tune all of them. So as you can see, after a couple of trials, we are somewhere around here. Almost the change is minus one to plus one. You can even proceed further. And we see per almost perfect match between what we predicted or what sim metrics predicting versus what HFSS is predicting. Now you can go farther and reduce them almost to zero or close to zero in order to improve the return loss below minus 20 db or even below minus 25 db now notice here that there's a difference between the solid line which is the same matrix calculation and the dotted lines which are coming from hfss and that's what we call the dispersion effect so if you have a, a filter that's physically symmetric then the curves will not be symmetric. As you can see, you will see a fast drop at high frequency. Now, if you want them to be symmetric, then physically, like the red line, then physically is not gonna be symmetric, it will be asymmetric, that's not what we want. So we would like to know, we would like to keep our filter physically symmetric, so we'd like to stick to the dot line. So how can we bring the solid one to the dotted line? Now we go back to the single, to the dispersion section that we talked about at the beginning and we said later on we're gonna talk more about it as we can see we this is the pattern we have we can add for example to here and we say apply dispersion that you see the curve moved back we go to cat and we say extract and now we see almost perfect match between hfss and symmetrix by applying the additional dispersion and by this, we conclude this video.